Hello everyone, I am Pragya Shivastav. I am here to record a lecture on state space variable model. The course code is KEC602 and uh, previously we have recorded unit 1 and in this unit 2 we have recorded two previous lectures where we have started discussing what is state space analysis, how is it different from uh, transfer function analysis. So in my present lecture we will be discussing a state space equation, we will be discussing few uh, examples and we'll, based on that examples, we will also discuss several numericals and uh, state diagram as well. So, in state space analysis, we are concerned with three terms, three types of variables that are involved in modeling of dynamic systems that are input variables, output variables and state variables. So, state variables, input and output are variable, we are very much very, uh, familiar uh, in uh, transfer function analysis, we have seen the input variable as R, output variable as C. But here state space, state variables, they are the intermediate variables which will tell us the intermediate states of a system which we do not have, which we do not see and which we cannot and, uh, estimate in states and uh, transfer function analysis. So, let us assume that we have uh, total M inputs and P outputs and there are n number of intermediate uh, levels which is nothing but also the number of integrators. So, here we have m number of inputs also p number of outputs and total the states are n. So, we have n state variables. So, here we have also seen that when we write the state equation. So, this is the vector matrix or we can call it uh, state vector. This is the state mat system matrix, this is the input matrix, this one is the output matrix and this one is the feed forward or transition matrix. Now, what is y and u? So, here we can of, of course, we can uh, visualize that one is the input vector and the other is the output vector. Here we can see that this one is the output vector and this one is the input vector. This is differential vector matrix. Again, we see that m, there are m number of states, n number of input variable and p number of output variable. Now, we can see that we can make a block diagram out of these matrix. So, this one is the input matrix, this one is the output matrix and then here we have this system matrix and this one is the feed forward matrix and here we have output, we have input, this is the state vector and this is the differential state vector. Now we see, let us say we have x dot and we pass it through an integrator, of course we will have x here. Got it? So, we have to uh, visualize this relationship when we are entering into signal flow graph and we will see that how a differential term like dx by dt changes into x after passing through an integrator. So, we will also study this in S domain like the differential term when passed through an integrator which is which is s inverse will will uh, yield a normal vector like dx by dt will yield x here now let us try to understand a mathematical model on the basis of this mathematical model we can see that the input is f which is the force being applied to the mass m1 so according to newton's law f let us let's, let's, uh, limit our discussion only till the mass m. So, f is equals to m a. So, in terms of input and output, this f is the input and this x is the output which is nothing but displacement. 
Now we can relate the input and output that like f and x in Newton's second law by using the relation m into acceleration can be defined as d2x by dt square. So this is the scenario when we had only m. Let us consider that the system which we are considering is also having a damper b and also having a spring constant k. So the force component for damper b will be b into first derivative of displacement and for this force con the force component for spring will be k into x. So if we want to see the impact of force, we have to put together the three components like the force experienced by the mass m1, force experienced by the damper b and the force experienced by the spring k. Now we have to see and visualize and arrange the given uh, set of uh, input and its response in terms of an equation. So let's try to figure out in terms of equation. This is the first component based on the mass. This is the second component based on the damper B. This is the third component based on the spring constant K. So now we are adding three of them. Now we have to determine the number of state variables by order of the system. Now the first step is to define the state variables. Now I, I, can, I want to uh, start all together with this. Here we see, like I can represent dx by dt as x dot, okay. Now, in this particular experiment, what I am doing is, I am replacing dx, I am assuming, just assuming, just assuming that x is equals to x1. I am trying to figure out how many uh, state variables will I configure, will I use to configure this system. So let us assume that x is equals to x1. Now here, from here I can write d like first derivative will be equal to d x1 by dt and I can also write it as x1 dot. So what have I written? dx by dt is equals to x1. Now this I have previously claimed and also I am also making this is the first assumption x is equals to x1. The second assumption will be x1 dot is equals to x2. So here I have made the second assumption. So this is the first assumption this is the second assumption. Now if x1 dot is x2 then d2x by dt square will be x2 dot. From here, I can tell you that I can rearrange the given equation in terms of the state variables and the state variables are x1 and x2. Why am I not writing till x3? Because I know the order of the differential equation that is 2 will tell me the number of state variables. So if in any system I am having second order differential equation, I am very clear that the number of state variables will be 2. Another example, if my system is a fourth order differential equation, then I am very clear that there will be four differential equations. Now, there will be four uh, state variables. So, I am rearranging this equation in this terms. I am going to write it like I can write f is equals to m. Now, d2x by dt square in terms of x1 or x2 can be written as x2 dot x2 dot plus b. Now dx by dt in terms of x1 or x2. So in terms of let us uh, write in terms of x2. So it is b x2 plus k x is nothing but x1. So this is the equation now, further I will write the equation putting x1, putting x2 dot in the LHS and rearranging, I get x2 dot equals to, I have to divide m 
I have to divide the complete equation by m, divide and multiply of course. So, this is the first term is f by, f by m minus b by m x2 minus k by m x1. So, here is the resultant diagram. Now, of course, I can use the equation, I have to visualize the differential vectors. So, in this equation I can see I have to visualize x1 dot, I will just clear the board and start from beginning. So, let, let us make a matrix out of it like previously we have done, from here I will start x1 dot and x2 dot. Now, now, what is x1 dot in terms of x1 and x2? So, x1 dot is 0 times of x1, if I am multiplying, plus 1 of x2. So, here I see I have this term. plus, okay, I have to also write in terms of matrix u. So, this is 0 u, okay. Now, next x2 dot, x2 dot in terms of x1 and x2. So, x2 is minus k by m times of x1, this term minus b by m times of x2 plus f by m times of u, f by m times of u. So, here we see this is the required matrix. So, here is this state system matrix A, here is the input matrix B. Now, again Output matrix we have not um, calculated yet. So, but I will tell you here it is the output matrix C, and of course, we will have D U. So, the complete term is not applicable because we are not having any feed forward matrix here. So, let us find out this thing relationship of Y with respect to X1 and X2. Here we have now the output that is x. So, output is x and we can see that output in terms of x1 like we have output in terms of x1. So, y is equals to 1 into x1 plus 0 into x2. This is from where we have output is nothing but displacement x. I have previously I have told you this was input and x was output. So, x is the output. Now, output in terms of x1 and x2. So, of course, output x is output, sorry, output x is 1 x1 plus 0 x2. So, I can write it 1 x1 plus 0 x2. So, this is how I will be making equations. Now, having said that, I have to see how can I configure the decomposition like depending upon the above steps determine the matrix for the following transfer function. Now, this is the following transfer function. In the previous question, we were having the uh, system, we were having a physical system, we were having and uh, based on that physical system, we have realized the state equations and based on the state equations, uh, we have differential equations. Based on the differential equations, we have tried to find out the state equations. Now, let us see a different approach. In this question, we are having a transfer function itself. We are only having the transfer function. Based on this transfer function, we have to find the state equations. So, what are we previously doing? What are we doing? We are just trying to rearrange the transfer function in terms of equations so that we have a uh, differential equation. Now, this transfer function can be written as the ratio of output by input. Now, output is y of s, input is u of s.
now let's cross multiply let's rearrange and then we have y of s into s2 square plus 2s plus 3 is equals to 4 us now let us rearrange and rewrite the equation in terms of differential order vectors now s square can be written as d d2y by dt square plus 2 of s that is dy by dt plus 3y is equals to 4u now from here i have changed the differential equation in terms of i have changed the transfer function in terms of differential equation now again we are rearranging this he, here also we can see that this is the uh, y is the output and u is the input so let us try to see a block diagram out of it now we are very much clear that once we have a differential term like x1 dot and we pass it through an integrator it becomes x1 so we have to see that let's talk about this summation which is just u now what we are doing in this equation we have to see that this there is we have to see that in this we have since it is a second order differential equation so we will make we understand that second order differential equation will require two integrators now two integrators means here we will be having x2 dot will be equal to x2 this x2 will be equal to x1 dot and here x1 dot and here we'll be, we'll be having just x1 so x1 now here we have we can see that if i solve the given equation and i try to understand the transfer function with the help of this block diagram what can i relate from here let's say i am multiplying this x1 dot into 2 and then x, this x1 dot is nothing but dy by dt here it is x1 dot so two times of x1 dot like the single after single differential after single integrator so it is multiplied with 2 and here we have dx dy by dt and we are multiplying with gain 2 o opposite to that i have 3 this 3 just multiplied with the term y so 2 into dy by dt this term 3 into just y is produced here so here what do i have i have here ut plus 3 x1 or i can also write it as 3 x1 and here i can also write it i am adding this term here it is 2 times of dy by dt so i am getting what d2y by d dt square plus twice of dy by dt plus 3y and the resultant equation which i see is y is equals to x1 from the given block diagram i have so from here we have y will be equal to x1 first differential term will be x1 dot is equal to x2 d2y by dt square is equals to let's di differentiate this term and we have x1 dot here and then we have d2x by dt square as x2 dot here let let us assume that d2y by dt square is x2 dot plus 2 plus 3x1 is equals to 4u now 
we have we can rearrange it and d2 y d2 uh, d2 x by dt square will be nothing but x2 dot is will be equal to 2y 2 4u minus 3x1 minus 2x so from here in this equation we can rewrite the input vectors from this equation and this equation we have x1 dot is equals to 0x1 plus 1x2 x2 dot will be equals to minus 3x1 minus 3x2 plus 4u and then y will be equal to 1x1 plus 0x2. So, this is how we just make this transfer from this is how we make the state equations. Now, this is matrix A, this is matrix B and this is matrix C. So, one more thing we have to see that we can again get the transfer function from these matrix A, B and C. How? We just have one single formula and that formula is this one. So, previously we had A, we had B, we had C. In my present numerical, this u is nothing but 0. So, we can again get the same transfer function using this formula. In, in, in my in slides to come, in my next slides, we will be studying this formula in detail. But what we have started, we were having a transfer function. We had made the differential equation. Out of that differential equation, we uh, made the matrices. We have made the matrix, all the matrix. From that matrix, we have also made the block diagram. And from that block diagram, we now have, from that matrix itself, we have matrix A, B, C and D. Presently in this question, we were having D as 0. So, of course, it is added. So, it is this term plus 0. And if you arrange, we have this particular formula. If you arrange, then in this transfer function, we will have the transfer function again. So, transfer function again can be received. So, this was all about my today's lecture. More on this, I will discuss in my next lecture. Thank you.